Soviet spacecraft on a mission to Venus has captured an image that's never been seen before. Venus, often called Earth's sister planet, has long been covered in mystery due to its thick atmosphere, sulfuric acid rain, carbon dioxide filled air. The Soviet Union undertook a mission that seemed nearly impossible by landing a spacecraft on Venus. How did a Soviet spacecraft survive Venus's hellish conditions for over an hour? And what astonishing images did the Soviet probe discover? Join us in this video as we look into the Soviet probe's first real image of Venus. Before we delve into this, let's take a closer look at the mission behind it. One third of the space missions that have explored Venus by either flying or orbiting were part of the former Soviet Union's Venera series. They were named after the Russian word for Venus. These missions took place between 1961 and 1983, and their primary aim was to unravel the mysteries of the second planet from the Sun. Out of the 28 spacecraft launched as part of the Venera missions, 13 entered into Venus's atmosphere, while 8 touched down on its surface. NASA's Parker Solar Probe reached a significant milestone on February 9, 2022. This occurred when it took its first actual pictures of Venus in both invisible and near-infrared light. With its superior wide-field imager, the probe captured the whole night side of Venus as it traveled through space. NASA combined photographs collected during the Parker Solar Probes close to the planet, resulting in an awe-inspiring audiovisual presentation. This beautiful footage reveals Venus's subtle radiance, highlighting its continental regions and wide plains. Prior to this, the Soviets developed many probes. Venera 1, launched on February 12, 1961, was a groundbreaking mission. Its main goal was to perform a flyby of Venus and gather valuable data about our mysterious Venus. Scientists eagerly awaited information on Venus's magnetic field, cosmic rays, and charged particles. However, there was a setback during the mission. Communication with Venera 1 was lost before it reached Venus. This kept them in suspense. Did it manage to complete its scientific observations? Did it get melted by Venus, or did it continue its journey into deep space? While we may never have all the answers, Venera 1 will always be remembered as the first human-made object to venture close to another planet. Venera 2, which was launched on November 12, 1965, was the Soviet Union's next attempt to explore Venus. This mission aimed to perform a flyby of Venus, similar to Venera 1, but with a renewed strategy. Unlike its predecessor, Venera 2 successfully reached Venus. This marked a historic moment as the first spacecraft to fly by another planet. Scientists eagerly awaited data on Venus's atmosphere and magnetic field. However, a communication glitch prevented Venera 2 from transmitting any of this valuable information back to Earth. Nevertheless, the mission was far from a failure, as it provided crucial experience and paved the way for future Venus missions. Building on their earlier successes, scientists continued their exploration of Venus with the development of four more spacecraft. These are known as Venera 3, 4, 5, and 6. These missions were laser-focused on conducting an in-depth examination of Venus's atmosphere. It sought to conduct a detailed examination of planet Venus's atmosphere. Each of these robust probes tipped the scales at around 2,000 pounds, equivalent to a hefty 900 kilograms. What made these missions truly impressive was their cutting-edge instruments, which were finely tuned for the challenging Venusian environment. They were also equipped with a detachable module known as a descent module, especially with a unique set of scientific tools. Among the instruments at their disposal were a barometer to measure atmospheric pressure, a radar altimeter to gauge altitude, gas analyzers to decipher the composition of the atmosphere, and thermometers to record temperatures. However, the path to discovery was far from smooth, and not all of these missions went according to plan. On March 1, 1966, Venera 3, despite its intent to perform a planned landing on Venus, met an unexpected fate as it collided with the planet's surface. This collision was historic as it became the first spacecraft in history to strike another celestial body. Undeterred, the Venera program pressed on, and on October 18, 1967, Venera 4 took a remarkable journey. For over 90 minutes, it descended through Venus's dense and thick atmosphere. During its descent, it made some revelations. It found no evidence of a global magnetic field around Venus, and it detected high levels of carbon dioxide in the planet's atmosphere. As expected, 
Venera 4 eventually gave in to the extreme heat and pressure of Venus. Venus exploration didn't end there. On May 16 and 17, 1969, both Venera 5 and Venera 6 parachuted through Venus's toxic atmosphere. These missions proved to be successful in the Venera program. They successfully transmitted valuable data for more than 50 minutes, offering fresh insights into the enigmatic world of Venus. They discovered three layers of thick clouds around Venus. After that, Venera 7 was designed to withstand the incredibly tough conditions on Venus. It is a sturdy spaceship with special features to handle the planet's harsh environment. It had a unique part called a descent module to land gently on Venus's surface. Venera 7 was launched on August 17, 1970, and it did something truly groundbreaking. However, on December 15, 1970, when it reached Venus, it descended faster than planned due to a parachute issue. Then, it landed at a speed of about 38 miles per hour. Venera 7 was able to land on the planet's surface as a result of its robust cooling system. It survived for 23 minutes in intense heat and sent back detailed data about temperature, pressure, and atmospheric density. Even though Venera 7 faced challenges initially, it managed to send back valuable data for a limited time. Scientists used the data from Venera 7 to estimate the air pressure on Venus's surface. This turned out to be extraordinarily high at about 92 times what you would experience, more than half a mile, which is about 900 meters underwater. In essence, Venera 7 transformed our understanding of Venus. It shattered the notion of Venus as an Earth-like paradise and revealed its true nature as an incredibly hot and pressurized space. Surprisingly, Venera 8 made groundbreaking geochemical contributions that reinforced Venus's status as Earth's sister planet. While our ability to directly observe Venus's surface from space is limited, Venera 8 managed to uncover some astonishing insights about visibility on Venus. Venera 8's mission was historic. It not only marked the first ever successful landing on another planet, but also became the second artificial object to touch down on Venus. Launched on March 27, 1972, this daring spacecraft embarked on a mission to unravel the mysteries of Venus's atmosphere and surface. Within 118 days, Venera 8 voyaged through space and arrived at Venus, ready to collect critical data. It sought to verify measurements of Venus's atmosphere made by its predecessor, Venera 7. Though it faced a couple of landing challenges, it managed to report that the planet's atmosphere consisted of 97% carbon dioxide. Additionally, Venera 8 noted a surface pressure of 9.0 MPa and a scorching surface temperature of 887 degrees Fahrenheit. These measurements left no room for doubt because Venus had no form of water, making it an inhospitable environment for human habitation. However, Venera 8's smooth landing held an unexpected revelation. The Venera Ace photometer, an instrument on board, showed that visibility on Venus's surface was similar to a cloudy day on Earth. It was possible to see approximately one kilometer in every direction despite the difficulty of viewing through the thick Venusian atmosphere. At higher altitudes in Venus's sky, engineers working on the Venera project saw the need to capture surface images once Venera 8 touched down. This realization paved the way for a historic moment in 1975 when Venera 9 became the first lander to capture pictures of another planet's surface. Well, that's not all about Venera 8. When it successfully landed on the surface of Venus, it continued to work and collect data for about 50 minutes and 11 seconds. During this short but crucial time, it used some scientific instruments to measure the presence of three specific elements in Venus, thorium, potassium, and uranium. On Earth, these elements are known as trace elements. This means that they exist in our planet's geological features, such as rocks and minerals, but in small or trace amounts. To give you an idea, Scientists often find these elements in geological formations like those found in Hawaii or along mid-ocean ridges. While they play important roles in Earth's geological processes, they aren't the leading components of these structures. Venera 8's measurements of these elements on Venus were vital because they provided valuable insights into the composition of Venus's surface. In essence, Venera's mission wasn't just about touching down on Venus but it's about revealing a host of secrets that reshaped our understanding of the planet. Venera 9 was one of the stars of the Venera program. It was launched into space on June 8, 1975 from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Its primary objective? 
to explore the mysterious Venus. This mission is no small feat. It involves navigating through the dangerous Venusian environment. Planet Venus is characterized by its thick, acidic clouds, searing temperatures, and crushing atmospheric pressure. The Soviet missions, Venera 9 through Venera 12, are still well remembered today. And one of the main reasons is because they were equipped with cutting-edge instruments, including high-resolution cameras and spectrographs. They were designed to capture vital data about Venus's atmosphere, surface, and geological features. These missions, each weighing about 5,000 kilograms or 11,000 pounds, sent landers to Venus's surface. These landers had cameras that could take pictures of the ground below. The journey to Venus was a daunting one, and the spacecraft faced numerous challenges along the way. The temperature on Venus was too hot, more than twice the melting point of tin. At such a fiery temperature, regular radio equipment would simply melt and even paper would burst into flames. It's so hot that it could even turn lead into a liquid. But that's not all. Venus is also known for its incredibly high atmospheric pressure. In fact, the pressure on Venus was a mind-boggling 911 times greater than what we feel here on Earth. After Venera 9 traveled for four and a half months, covering a whopping 186 million miles, the landing vehicle worked on Venus for 53 minutes. This information comes from an official announcement by the Soviet press agency TASS. After embarking on its interplanetary voyage, it had to endure a lengthy cruise through space before reaching its destination. The real trial, however, began upon entering Venus's noisy atmosphere. Imagine descending into an atmosphere where the air pressure is over 90 times greater than Earth's. At the same time, the surface temperatures exceed 900 degrees Fahrenheit, which is approximately 482 degrees Celsius. Even the most durable spacecraft would struggle under these conditions. The Soviet probe's descent through the Venusian atmosphere was a tough experience for the mission team. To survive this, it had to use a heat shield and a parachute to slow down its descent while gathering crucial scientific data. It wasn't explicitly stated if the Soviet probe, known as Venera 9, stopped working after that duration. But that's what it seemed like. It also wasn't clear if Soviet scientists, who previously received transmissions from two other probes lasting 23 and 50 minutes, were optimistic that this spacecraft might last longer. Additionally, the probe measured atmospheric pressure that was 911 times greater than what we experience at sea level on Earth. The Soviet scientists were really happy about the landing. They were more excited about the super clear picture sent back. Now, let's get to the heart of the matter, the first real image of Venus. The moment the world had been eagerly awaiting arrived when the probe's cameras captured this stunning view of the planet's surface. The image revealed a landscape unlike any we had imagined. The images were pretty unsettling. They showed a dry and alien landscape that seemed to stretch out as far as the eye could see. These pictures had a unique look because of their wide-angle lenses, giving them a sharp and slightly curved appearance. But they also showed something interesting, the edges of the landers, revealing their distinct Soviet design. The photograph depicted a rocky landscape with a variety of geological characteristics, such as mountains, valleys, and what looked to be old lava flows. The colors were vibrant, ranging from rusty reds to ochre yellows, hinting at a complicated geologic past. The presence of these features suggests that Venus may have had a more active and diverse past than previously thought. The scientists claim that the moon doesn't have rocks like Venus. They used to think Venus would destroy all its rocks with erosion, but there they were with sharp edges intact. Moving forward to Venera 13 and 14, launched in 1981, were like upgraded versions of Venera 9 to 12. Venera 14 spacecraft did not disappoint when it came to capturing remarkable images. This sturdy probe touched down on the planet's surface and endured for an impressive 57 minutes, all thanks to some smart engineering. You see, the instruments on board were carefully stored in a sealed titanium case and cooled down significantly before reaching the surface. These missions had landers equipped with fancy acoustic instruments that could listen to the wind on Venus and measure how fast it was blowing. One of the key achievements of Venera 14 was its camera module. It was able to capture 14 vivid color images and eight black and white ones of Venus's landscape. Among these, a particular view gained widespread recognition for its breathtaking beauty. It produced a clear image of Venus's unique landscape, showcasing rock formations surrounded by dark, shallow soil. 
What added an extra layer of intrigue to these images were certain objects that appeared somewhat confusing amidst this desert landscape. Some keen-eyed scientists from the Space Research Institute of the Russian Academy of Sciences made the wild assumption that these items may be evidence of human civilization on Venus. They pointed out details in the images that seemed to resemble a disk, a dark cloth, and even a scorpion-like shape. These objects would suddenly appear in the frame, move about, and then vanish mysteriously. But the enthusiasm about the possibility of an alien society on Venus was temporary. It was discovered that these items were just a portion of the probe and not proof of intelligent life. They unintentionally separated from the spaceship during the difficult landing, thus putting an end to the brief but enticing theory of Venusian civilizations. Venera 15 and 16, launched on June 2nd and 7, 1983, took a different approach. They were a bit lighter, weighing less than 9,000 pounds or about 4,100 kilograms each, and they skipped the landers. Instead, they carried super-advanced radar-based imaging gear that could scan Venus from their unusual orbits. Even though the resolution wasn't super high, they were about a mile or one to two kilometers per pixel. Yet, these missions made history by being some of the first to map Venus using radar. The images they sent back were remarkably clear, showing us vast areas of rugged terrain with impact craters, towering mountains, and lava-filled basins. The importance of this discovery cannot be overstated. This image made scientists rethink everything they knew about Venus. For decades, it has been overshadowed by Mars in terms of planetary exploration. However, this new image is a turning point that has reignited interest in Venus and prompted scientists to reevaluate their understanding of the planet. One of the key takeaways from this image is that Venus might have had a past more like Earth. The geological features show a history of volcanic activity and tectonic movement, which could imply the existence of water in the distant past. This raises the notion that Venus may have once been a habitable planet. Following this exciting discovery of potential signs of life on Venus, NASA allocated funds for more exploration of this planet. While Venus may not be a candidate for colonization like Mars or a potential human home, it holds vital clues about its past and the processes it has undergone over millions of years. Long ago, scientists believed Venus resembled Earth, with a friendly atmosphere, seasons, and even water. However, a runaway greenhouse effect, similar to the one affecting Earth, transformed Venus into the toxic and inhospitable world we know today. So, what's next for Venus exploration? With the image, scientists and space agencies worldwide are eager to send more missions to this fascinating planet. NASA is preparing for a mission to Venus in the coming years. In 2028 and 2030, the Veritas and Da Vinci Plus probes will set out on their journeys. Veritas, building on the legacy of the Magellan mission, will use radar mapping from Venus's orbit, but this time with much greater precision. Meanwhile, Russia is also preparing for a new trip to Venus. In 2031, the Venera D mission will build upon the successes of the 1970s and 80s. This project, consisting of a lander and an orbiter, will endure the harsh conditions on Venus's surface for a whole month. Thus, it will gather more detailed and unique data than ever before. Moreover, the available data and images provide vital insights for future journeys to Venus. Planning future lander missions and perhaps even human exploration needs an understanding of the planet's geology and surface conditions. Now that we've uncovered the real image of Venus, what else would we find there in the future? Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.